There's people all over the world, including myself, who would willingly admit that Ravi Zacharias is one of their spiritual heroes. And over the past couple weeks, it's officially come out that the recent allegations of sexual misconduct against Ravi Zacharias appear not only credible, but are worse than originally thought. I'm Adam Simon with Responding to the Call, and today in one of the hardest videos that I've ever had to do personally because of what Ravi Zacharias has meant to me, I'm going to share four powerful truths that all of us can hold on to that will steady our heart and anchor our faith when our heroes fall. So if you're not sure what's been going on, earlier last year, Ravi Zacharias, a well-known author, speaker, and defender of the Christian faith, passed away from cancer. And since that time, there's been multiple allegations against him, accusing him of sexually assaulting several women throughout his time in ministry. Ravi Zacharias International Ministries took these allegations very, very seriously. They hired independent investigators to look into the allegations. And over the past couple weeks, RZIM confirmed what the ongoing investigation has uncovered, that by all accounts, these allegations appear to be true, and that Ravi is indeed guilty of sexual misconduct. Here's a direct statement from an email that I received from them. While the investigation remains ongoing, is not expected to be completed until January or February, yesterday we received a brief interim update on the investigation we felt we needed to share. Sadly, the interim investigation update indicates this assessment of Robbie's behavior to be true, that he did indeed engage in sexual misconduct. We are devastated for those who have suffered from Robbie's misconduct and for the pain that they are enduring. Again, this was just an update, basically midstream in the investigation where the investigators felt there was enough clear evidence of this that they put out a statement sharing what many hoped were just baseless rumors. Unfortunately, not only were they not rumors, but the report reveals that there might be facts coming out that in their words are more serious than even what was brought against them. Devastation and pain is being felt by so many right now. The victims, their families, Ravi's family, understandably shaken from the news that, that goes against everything they've ever believed and seen in the man that they've known all of their lives. There's potentially millions of people feeling like this right now. This news is deeply personal to me as well because of what Ravi Zacharias and his ministry has meant in my own life and my own faith and my own growth as a Christ follower over the years. I've been an avid listener to his podcast. I've had the chance to meet him personally. And when I was in India on a mission trip, I even got a chance to visit their RZIM headquarters and meet some of his staff. So what do we do with this now? What do you do when your heroes fall, when they fail, when your mentor or your pastor or your spiritual hero, someone you've looked up to for so long and has taught you so much that God's used to grow your faith tremendously, what do you do when you're blindsided by the news that they're not the person that they said they were or the person they portrayed themselves all their lives to be? Or worse, what do you do when you're a victim of their abuse and their manipulation? We all know that Ravi Zacharias is not the first person in this situation, and he definitely won't be the last. And I believe there's four truths that all of us can hold on to when something like this happens. Four rock-solid reasons why your faith does not need to be shaken and can even thrive and grow if or when your heroes fall. So stick around, especially for number four, because I believe that's the one that everything else hangs on and absolutely has the power to change our lives. Truth number one, people are instruments, not the point. And we trust in God not in a person. Our faith, the Christian faith, is not about following our favorite speaker, songwriter, author, sports figure, or social media influencer. It's about one thing and one thing only, trusting, placing our faith in, and following Jesus Christ. All those other things and all those other people are just instruments and tools in God's hands that he's using to speak through and grow our love and affection for him. They're the tools, not the point. If a surgeon uses a scalpel to do open heart surgery, we're not grateful for the scalpel, we're grateful for the surgeon. The scalpel didn't change and save your life, the surgeon did. This is the same thing. Now this one stings a little because at the end of the day it reveals our motives and it reveals who we're really following all along. Because regardless of how well they speak, how much knowledge and wisdom they have, and how successful they've been, people are still just people. And what happens sometimes naturally without even thinking about it or realizing it is that slowly over time, maybe even imperceptibly, we put these men and women up on a pedestal in our hearts. And when they fail, when they fall, and they turn out to be just as human and just as flawed as everyone else, including us, it can disorient and disillusion us like a sucker punch if we're not careful. And if we're not careful, it can rattle our faith and cause us to question not only God, but everything we've ever believed. Truth number two, people's failures don't nullify the good that God's done in the world through them. I shared earlier how much Robbie Zacharias has impacted my life, and that was not an understatement. His ministry and his teaching have made an indelible impact on millions of people's lives, and God's used him to help us consider some of the deepest questions of our faith to know why we believe what we believe. In fact, the main tagline for RZIM is helping the thinker believe and helping the believer think. 
and lots of people around the world have come to faith in Christ through his ministry of, of speaking and teaching and books and podcasts. Here's my point. All of that is still true. God has worked miracles in people's lives. The thinker is now believing and the believer is now thinking. People are still following Jesus Christ because of his work. None of it is voided out because of Ravi's failures. Not a single thing. All that means is that a good God did great things in the world through someone who made some very bad decisions. It also means that every good and perfect gift that he's brought into your life because of it remains to this day. None of it is nullified. Remember and hold on to this. It wasn't Ravi Zacharias. It was God working through him. Ravi was just the instrument that the surgeon used. And God wanted to get your attention and speak to you and change your life so much that he was willing to do anything through anyone to say it to you. The Bible says in Romans chapter 8, verse 28, that we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good for those who are called according to his purpose. All things, even this, even Ravi Zacharias. If anything, it shouldn't damage our faith. It should strengthen it. Truth number three, Ravi will be held accountable and he'll be judged with a stricter judgment and he'll answer to God for what he did. If all the allegations are true and credible, which they appear to be at this point, and if Ravi Zacharias used his words to manipulate, abuse, or entice these women, he will without a doubt answer to God for what he did, for the trust he broke, for the lives he damaged, for the power he abused, for the fallout and for the pain, for the families that he crushed, both his own family and the victims' families, for the millions around the world who believed he was living one way, but in private, he was living another. According to the Bible, people who are called to teach and preach God's word will be judged more severely than others. James chapter 3 verse 1 says, Not many of you should become teachers, my brothers, for you know that we who teach will be judged with greater strictness. This is the leader of the first century church warning people for the rest of time that those who teach and preach the word of God will receive greater judgment for the words they use. Because teachers have a responsibility. They know more and they should know better. Same goes for me. The same goes for any teacher of God's word or any person in authority over others. Remember, God's judgment is just. He's known all along and we need to hold on to that. Truth number four, everything in life hinges on the heart. Every story, yours, mine, Robbie Zacharias's, and everyone in between boils down to one thing, how well we care for our own hearts. Not one of us is exempt from temptation or beyond the capability to do the things we've been talking about in this video. You know, there's a passage in the Bible that I've taught my kids ever since they've been old enough to talk, and it's for good reason. It's because if, if we don't get this right, nothing else matters. It's Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23, which says, Above all else, guard your heart, because everything you do flows from it. This is where every story, every decision, every accomplishment, every ministry, every parenting decision, every marriage, and every aspect of our character starts and ends. He says, above all else, everything, first and foremost, nothing is more important. Guard your heart. Guard it. Protect it develop it because everything else you are as a person flows out from it. And honestly, I think the most revealing thing about these words is who wrote it and why. Proverbs chapter 1 verse 1 says that these are the Proverbs of Solomon, son of David, king of Israel. The same David who wrote the Psalms, that, that incredible treasury of prayers, struggles, songs, and triumphs that have encouraged and strengthened people for thousands of years. Also the same David who was an adulterer and a murderer, a man who messed up so badly that it cost his reputation at the time and even cost people their lives, even including his own son. Yet even in these, these tremendous moral failures like sexual abuse and, and taking another person's life, David has been known for thousands of years as a man after God's own heart. And people like you and me have been the beneficiaries of the grace and forgiveness of God in David's life. And God used that same sinful, broken man's heart to write the words that have changed the lives of countless people, including my own over the centuries. That David. Earlier in Proverbs chapter 4, Solomon says, When I was young and with my father, he's talking about David, it says, He taught me and he said to me, Take hold of my words with all your heart. Son, keep my commands and you'll live. Pay attention to what I say. Turn your ear to my words. Don't let them out of your sight. Keep them within your heart because they're life to those who find them and health to one's whole body. And then it's like he leans in with everything he's got and he stares directly into Solomon, his son's eyes, maybe through regret, maybe through the sting of his own mistakes or the pain or hurt he's caused so many people and maybe even the missed opportunities to steward well the, the, the position and the power that God's given him, maybe even choking back tears. And he gives them the wisest advice that any father or any parent could ever give to their children. Get this into your soul. Guard your heart. Put safeguards in place. 
Know your weaknesses. Figure out your blind spots. Don't put yourself in situations you shouldn't be in. Fill and feed your heart with the Word of God with healthy things, and then beg for the grace of God to give you the strength to resist when you need it most. This is timeless advice. This was advice for Ravi, advice for you, and advice for me. Remember, God loves you in ways you can't possibly fathom. Don't let this shake your faith. Nothing that Ravi Zacharias or anyone else done nullifies the work that God's done in your life. If you can hold on to anything, hold on to that. God's got you. He always has. He always will. So I pray that these four truths encourage you and help build your faith. I'd love to know which one resonated most for you, and I'd love to know your story. Have you ever had one of your heroes fall or fail, and how did God walk you through it? So leave a comment and let me know. And also, consider subscribing if this video was helpful at all to you. So God bless you guys. I'll see you in the next video.